Hi, everybody. Welcome to SOS with Sonia Rasula. I am your host, Sonia Rasula. I'm really excited for today's episode because it features someone who has the most amazing energy. You are going to love her. In today's episode, we talk with Crystal Wright, the co-founder of Lot 11, an amazing urban apothecary brand headquartered in Compton, California. And by the way, Crystal founded the company with her mom. It's a mother-daughter company. So here's her dilemma. After being featured on HBO's Insecure recently, her website traffic spiked, but the sales didn't come, which is a huge problem and really a reflection of probably not a great designed website. So watch this episode as I share best practices for your homepage. I talk about the importance of website navigation and you'll find out exactly how I help Crystal with her navigation. And then we're going to talk a lot about product photography and social media, all things that everyone could use help on. So get ready as we dive in. First of all, welcome to SOS. We are all really excited to talk with you today. I would love for you to tell us your name, the name of your company, and what it is that you do. My name is Crystal, and I am the co-owner of Lot 11, and we are an urban apothecary conscious uh, brand, which we specialize in self-care products. And is your co-founder your mom? My co-founder is my wonderful mom. That's such a good part of your story. I just had to make sure that everyone listening knew that. So you are a mother-daughter team. Yes, we are. Absolutely. Grandma pitches in here and there. So it's, it's just a beautiful thing. <laughs> okay. So for everyone listening, we are talking about the company Lot 11. For everyone watching and listening, the website is lotxi.com just so you're not typing in lot and spelling out the word 11 or trying two ones. It's lotxi.com. Want to make sure that everyone knows that. You did such a great job. I love it. (laughs) So let's get into it. I know that you are struggling right now along with pretty much every single small business owner out there. So I wanted to hear just a little bit about how COVID has affected you. And then let's hear what your biggest need is. What do you need help with? Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things right now in terms of how COVID has impacted me, I think um, kind of when we first started out, it was like, you know, I had a full-time job and then just doing it on the side. And as quickly COVID came, quickly did my full-time job that really kind of funneled the financial uh, means into the business. And so not really having that, then Lot 11 really is on its own. Um, funding wise, uh, getting product out. And so it really has made it difficult in terms of products and, you know, just overall managing the company to make sure that we're still pushing the brand forward. Yeah. I'm so sorry about that. I obviously talked to you beforehand, so I knew the situation. And I think that's actually what motivated me to get you on the podcast even more, because Mm -hmm. as soon as I found out that your full-time job was gone. I was like, we need to take this to the next level for her. So that's what we're going to (laughs) do. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So let's see. So you also, you shared some information with me the other day and it was very helpful. Um, For all the small business owners listening, she shared a screenshot of her sales and traffic for the day. And I think that that's one thing that not enough small business owners do. So kudos to you for already looking at that number and being like, I don't think this is great, (laughs) but I don't know for sure. So is it okay if I throw out the numbers? Yes. And I'm just in general, just in general, but essentially on that day, you sold just under $400 worth of products. And you had though, like what seemed like over 1500 people visit your website. I don't know if those, that, that was 1500 unique people, or if that was 1500 page views, but either way, Mm -hmm. Your gut was right in thinking that seems to be a lot of traffic 
for a small amount of sales. Right. Absolutely. It was definitely like alarming. Um, very exciting at the same time because it was like right on the cusp of an HBO Insecure uh, show yes. episode that I was on, which was fun. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, now we're about to hit it. And then it was like, no, we're not going anywhere right now. So <laughs> it, it's it's interesting because also a life lesson for everyone out there. Obviously, the more you put yourself out there getting press mentions, doing giveaways, collaborating with people, like the more you get your name out there, the more people will know about you and the more sales you'll have. But people do tend to think like, oh, Forbes just wrote about me, so I'm going to make a killing now. Or like, I just got on the news (laughs) or insecure on HBO. And Lots of people are going to know about me in order. And it doesn't necessarily, sales don't necessarily come because of people coming to your website. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm here to tell you that we need to work on your website. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's came a long way. It's yeah. Came a long way. So I'm ready. I have pen. I have my wonderful, amazing content planner already out. Um, so I'm like really ready because lot 11 is all that I'm doing for now. Yes, I love your attitude. It's amazing. <laughs> so great. Cause I'm going to get into it. I'm obviously not going to hold back at all. I'm- Please don't give it to me. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So here's the first thing that I want to say um, to everyone listening. If you are seeing pretty good traffic to your website and you are just not seeing good conversions, like you're only selling a few things every day, even though there may be a thousand people on your website, you have to self-analyze what that means, right? It means that potentially a thousand people visited your website and only five purchased. That is not a great conversion rate. So you need to analyze your actual website. And it seems really hard and intimidating, but it shouldn't be. So we're just going to move forward. <laughs> and I'm about to give you all the real talk. Get Yay, ready. I appreciate it. Okay, so here's what I want to say. Your website, and it's been updated, I think, a little bit since the last time I was on it. Yes. Your website is not doing you and your products justice. Okay. Not at all. And hearing that you have an amazing Nikon camera excites me because it means that I'm going to be able to instantly help you because there are many different things that need improvement on this website, but one of them is photography. Okay. I'll get, I'll get into that though in, in a little bit. First, what I want to talk about is this. There is, hold on, I'm going to see if I can click that drop down. There we go. There is a style that is popular online and those styles change, trends come and go, but it behooves the small business owner to not go online and look at what big brands are doing because it helps you understand what is so-called popular right now online. Okay. And right off the bat, I can tell you, very few websites out there have a side navigation. So what I mean by that, everyone, is that when I go to lot11.com and I'm on the website and I want to click shop or contact us or FAQs, what happens is that navigation pops out from the left side of the screen. It's not a top navigation. And the thing that that does is A, it dates you because that's not what is popular right now. And it hasn't been popular for a while. So while you may think that it's the thing that kind of makes you unique and separates you, it's actually doing you a disservice. So I want you to right away change the template to a template that is top navigation. Got it. Then my comment on the navigation is that there, there is way too much. (laughs) There's way too much of it. (laughs) (laughs) So you want to think, I'm going to close it for a second. So you want to think about your website being like the cover of a magazine. It's the best analogy out there because everyone knows what a magazine cover looks like, right? You've got a beautiful photo as the 
the cover, you've got the name of the company front and center right at the top. And then you have these like buckets that draw your attention in like top 10 ways to make money or, you know, 50 amazing recipes that only cost $10. They're these bite-sized pieces of information that intrigue you and engage you. Okay. You need to think about your homepage like that, but you also need to think about navigation like that. So when you go to a website, the navigation is how people navigate your website. And you want people to come to your website and be able to very easily without searching around, getting confused, frustrated, and then leaving. You want people to come to your website and within one click, buy exactly what they came to buy. Mm -hmm. So if someone is looking very specifically for one of your candles, they're going to go to your website, they're going to get to this homepage, and you know, they're they're faced with some feature images that you have, which is great. I like that you understand the idea of having different features. You can click through and I can see you've got like bath, you've got body, you've got the home essentials, which is great. Think about how people navigate those. So if they come to the website and see a big, beautiful photo, first, what they think is, ooh, I'm intrigued. Ooh, I like this brand. And then if they're thinking, I want to buy a candle because that's how I heard about this brand. I heard about the candles or I watched Insecure and I saw her, you know. (laughs) So think about that. How is someone going to find the candles? They're going to go to the top nav, which currently right now for you is a side nav. And they're going to use those cues to then buy a candle. And here is where I go back to when I said that there was too much stuff in the nav. You are giving them everything. So currently your navigation is home, bath, body, face, candles, home essentials, the experience box, gift cards, community, blog, FAQs, contact us, search, collections, blog, community, FAQs, contact us, kind of like a sub nav. Okay. It's a lot. Okay. Visually, remember, you're going to be taking what you see on your side nav and it's going to be at the top of the website. There's no way all those words will fit fit. from left to right. So what you need to do is figure out how do I bucket these things into words that make sense to the average human being who is used to (laughs) surfing websites. And to me, it's very obvious. It's home, it's shop, it's about us or about me. I'm like, where is the about? I cannot believe you don't have an about page. That is true, but I thought it was in home. It's probably further down on the home page. But it means means that like, it's just no one can navigate and it's banking that the fact that they're going to keep scrolling, right? Right. So your story is important. You are a mother-daughter-owned business. That is such a good story, right? You grew up in Compton. You consider yourself to be an urban apothecary. I don't even know if anyone else says that they're an urban apothecary. You have all these great stories to tell, and they should be all on one page. And of course, amazing photos of you and your mom. (laughs) Yes. If I can like try to get her behind a camera, that would be awesome. <laughs> oh, you need to make it happen. Now, if not, this is, that's a great um, thought because if, if there are other people listening to this that also kind of have a <laughs> similar, where like they might have co-founders or maybe it's a few people that started the company, but like two of them are like, we want to be behind the scenes. Then what you're doing is, so you need great photos of yourself. And then it would be so great to see old vintage photos of you and your mom, you growing up, your mom in Compton, your mom, you know, I'm already picturing like 1970s, the way Polaroids, like the coloring was all different in photos then. Like you're telling a story. And when you tell a story, you draw people in and they want to support you because of that story. Like, oh my gosh, I read about the most amazing daughter who has a company with her mom, you know, like that starts and then people tell each other about you. 
So again, going back to the NAV, home, shop, about us, maybe F- FAQs and contact us, right? You're, you're narrowing it down to like the most important pages. And okay. traditionally, you know, in the web world, what we call those pages are landing pages. So you have your home page and then you have landing pages. And landing pages can have, you know, a whole series of information on them, or you can have a navigation that has drop downs. So under about, you see our story, our community, the blog, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How you disseminate that information. Um, so again, you have shop. And if someone scrolls over shop, they then see potentially the different areas of products that, that you have. Bath and body, face, home essentials. Like that's how you get away with having a giant navigation, which is what you currently have. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was like really helpful. Like even like as you're talking about it, I'm like, wow, like I'm already like falling in love like all over again. It's like a love and hate relationship. And I'm like, oh my God, now I'm so excited to fix the website. So this is great. Yay. I'm so happy. I knew you were, you have such a great attitude. I knew you were like, this is just going to give you fuel for your fire. I knew it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we've dealt with the navigation. You're going to tackle that. Um, okay. And then what I want to talk about is your homepage because this is also where I see room for improvement. Now I need you to improve that navigation because again, when people come to your website and they try to navigate Currently, they get that side navigation and instantly the impression is it's old fashioned. Okay. So you're going to do that. Then what you're going to do is concentrate on updating your homepage. Okay. When I scroll and I'm sharing the screen right now, so I know you can see and everyone else watching on YouTube can see, there's a giant chunk of text and okay. the average person is not going to read all of that, right? Okay. Okay. But what's in there is so important. And you know how much I love your mission. We did an IG live together about two months ago. Mm -hmm. And I just love talking to you about, you know, why you've created the company and what's behind the company. And so I'm going to kind of read some of this. So basically the her mission statement is right on the homepage, but because of it, it's a lot of text. It looks intimidating and that's on a desktop. If you're on a phone, And regularly, about 30 to 50% of people are now surfing on their phone, not looking at your website on a laptop or a desktop. Mm -hmm. That chunk of text becomes like super long scrolling. Mm -hmm. You have to think about making sure to design not just for desktops, but also in a vertical space. And, you know, do you use Shopify Mm -hmm. or Squarespace or who are you using? Shopify. So Shopify automatically does that. It it automatically adjusts the design for you. But what you have to keep in mind is if you have a big block of text that's one paragraph, suddenly if it's wide left to right, it becomes really long on a phone. Right. So what I want you to do is, so here's the mission. It's originated in Compton. Lot 11 is a community conscious urban apothecary. All of our products are curated and crafted by hand. It's important to us that we maintain quality products, which is why we use environmentally safe and organic ingredients. Our ingredients are purchased through fair trade and we don't store an excess of products in a warehouse. We purchase fresh ingredients from local farmers and pride ourselves in supporting other entrepreneurs. We champion a variety of Compton-based causes and donate quarterly. And then here are our 11 principles that guide the company and it's community, social justice, forgiveness, well-being, health, spirituality, clarity, growth, self-investment, family, and education. That is amazing, right? The problem is most people are never going to read all of that. So what I want you to do is on your newly formed about section. Okay. Right? Yes. Other about, you're going to have your history and your story, then, and that's about you and your mom. Then you're going to have a section that talks about our mission. And that's what I just read. Then you're going to have your 11 principles 
right? The principles that guide our work. And that's what you're going to see. So you are putting it on one page as opposed to having a big block of text on a home page. And a home page is really the cover of a magazine. Remember, it needs to just be a beautiful image, really, and things that attract your eye. So all of that information is now going to go on your about page. But the reason I read that for everyone listening is because I want to illustrate to everyone how you can take some of what's in your mission and bring it to the homepage. You just have to do it in a visually engaging, exciting manner. So when I look at this, and everyone should do this exercise, like print this page or copy the text that's on your website in various pages, print it so that it's on a piece of paper in front of you on a desk, take a highlighter. And what you're going to do is just highlight things that you think are interesting and stand out, right? So for me, when I think about reading that mission statement, for me, it's that it's Compton-based. It's that you are, that the products are made by hand, that you use environmentally safe and organic ingredients. These are catchphrases and things that people can attach to emotionally, So it's not in sentence form. You're now trying to just highlight words that you know will capture people's attention, kind of like those headlines and blurbs on the cover of a magazine. So when you think about it that way, and I love this bit. I didn't know this until I just read this now. I love this bit that it's fresh ingredients from local farmers. That is so interesting and so unique and so valuable. So Then what you do is you think about the homepage and you go, okay, Sonia told me that it needs to be visual and it needs to pop and it can't be written because people's attention spans are just not there today. So then what I do is I say, okay, what I'm going to do is take handmade products or handmade in Compton. That's a phrase right there. Then I'm going to take environmentally safe organic ingredients That's another blurb. Then I'm going to take fresh ingredients from local farmers, right? I'm choosing what I think are like three really important things about my company, maybe four, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to design them in graphics. And, you know, we do this on Unique Markets all the time. But what you do is you take a photo, you take a beautiful photo of either your products or just you know, plain solid color background and you do a graphic that's a block, right? A rectangle or a circle, whatever you want to do, but you create a rectangle and within that rectangle, you say handmade in Compton. And then in the next rectangle, it's environmentally safe. So now you understand where I'm going with this, which is you take this giant block of text that says a lot And you turn it into great captivating images on your homepage, Mm -hmm. you know, so people scroll and the way you have your products down below, if I scroll here, you've done that, right? You've done these blocks. So instead, I want to see storytelling that's about you and the company. Okay. And the interesting thing with this is you decide where they click if they click at all. Okay. You know, so you can have your thing saying, orig- you know, handmade in Compton. Another one is the environmentally safe organic ingredients. Another one is um, we pride ourselves in using ingredients from local farmers. Whatever it is, every single one of those could link to the, the shop page. Right? Mm, okay. That's what so, I was going to be my next question. Okay. Yeah. They don't have to they don't have to link to the About Us page. Every single one of those could just be like, ha, I just got you, right? You got interested <laughs> and now you're on my shop page. Then what you do is you have something, a bar, a graphic at the bottom, a photo of you perhaps that says, read more about our founders, something like that. And that 100% clicks to the About Us page. You know, meet our founders and read about our community-based mission, whatever the the writing is there. Um, You can go to uniquemarkets.com right now and you'll probably see we redesigned the website a little bit and 
if you scroll, if you keep scrolling, we have all the important stuff up top. And if you keep scrolling, you'll see a, a tiny little bar. And I think it's something about the fact that we are a female founded company and that clicks to the page that has more information about me. So we've talked about some ways that you can improve your homepage because what I think is happening is that people are coming to your website, they hear about you, they saw that you starred in an episode of Insecure on HBO, they come to your website and it's just not as boom, captivating. You, you've okay. got to hook them in a few seconds. Okay. You know what would be amazing? So again, this first half, you already have the right idea. <clears throat> it's, a, it's photography. That's the first thing. So that's great because that is visually what is going to get people to either like or not like your brand. So you have photography already. Then what's going to happen is they're going to scroll and they're going to see maybe some information about you, but done in a different way. Then they're maybe going to scroll and see a couple of your products or a row of your products. Okay. But why the heck do you not have somewhere on here as featured in Insecure, you know, like... Yes. So, <laughs> you know, it's, there's no excuse. Let's just say that <laughs> there's no excuse. And I will also say that I wasn't sure if we were actually going to be on the episode. Right. Right. And so that aired like two Sundays ago. So I watched it and then the most, the, my mom ended up breaking her ankle. Um, and so I literally had to get through the HBO orders with these little fingers and, <laughs> Right, right. You were so I'm like even having this opportunity right now. I'm like I'm I'm coming out of my little bubble because it was very tough. And so my mom is home recuperating. She's doing very very well. But we learned a lot of valuable lessons. Because um, is she the one who normally kind of does the packing, the shipping? The um, no, I, it's kind of the opposite. So my mom actually handles the body butter. Is her bread is like her baby. Like my mom, like chooses like the the best mango butters her raw shea butters like she she really it's her thing and she loves doing it and so um and so I she doesn't let me in the kind of kitchen essentially so you can imagine I really I just know the ingredients in terms of how carefully she melts all the butters together and repipes it back into the glass jar um, I don't have that information and I don't have that craft to do that. And so I really had to get through those orders alone. So uh, I'm just coming uh, out. Right. So I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't had the opportunity to get on, but it is on my to-do list. So yes. Okay. <laughs> well then that's another to-do item and you're going to have a lot of to-do items. Because, <laughs> you know, today is Thursday and I want by Monday this to be done. <laughs> I love it. I love, I like when people are bossy you know? with me. This is great. Because <laughs> you need deadlines. Otherwise, you know, we all know as creatives and entrepreneurs, we could just give ourselves 8,000 things to do. None of them are that efficient. And we're just floating by ourselves in the universe. <laughs> that is true. So, yeah, I mean, think about your time. Think about tomorrow, Friday. Now, you still have to get current orders in. So I know you have, there's other stuff on your to-do list, but... If you can dedicate some time to say, you know what, on Friday, I want to at least fix the navigation problem. And then maybe I'll spend some time on Sunday night reevaluating the homepage and moving things around and updating graphics and adding the fact that we were featured on HBO's Insecure because not only is that instant recognition for everyone coming to your website that didn't know about that, and they're like, oh shit, she was on Insecure. This is serious. Like this is a cool <laughs> company, right? And then if they did watch it and do know that they come and that's like, yep, this is it. I'm going to, I want to purchase, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm at the right place. So that needs to be on there. Okay. As you get more press from recognizable places, like if you've been written about, about from LA Times or, you know, anyone that has a legitimate, recognizable name, those logos should be, you know, you're scrolling the homepage, those logos should be at some point put onto the page because that lets people know that you are professional and that people have recognized you for your craft and your skill. You've sold so many items over the years 
that I know you must have glowing reviews. And so I'm not sure why I'm not seeing any of those words on the homepage. So that's interesting. So, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe we have it. Not, it's not that it's hidden. It's actually on the product. So, right. That is what most people do. We are learning this in season two because we're this season because of COVID-19, like we're digging deep into people's websites because the only way for you to reach the outside world is the website. Yes, yes, yes. So we are beginning to understand that all small business owners have the information kind of on there. It's just hidden and it's a couple clicks away. So I want everyone to understand how important it is that, inf- that information that can help you sell isn't a couple clicks away. So again, your yeah. home has to entice people right away on, on the top. And you know, like when you go to the page, it's, it's whatever you see on screen that's the first thing that they see that has to be amazing. If they like it, they'll scroll a little bit. And as they scroll, they see your beautiful products. They see that you've got press attention or that you've been on a major show like Insecure. Then they scroll a little bit more and they see your photo and some of your story enough that it entices them to click more. And for sure, reviews. And it's not the whole review. People always tend to, you know, the whole review can be on those individual pages, right? Okay. I'm clicking right now. I shared the screen with everyone. Um, So it can be on, let's just, I don't know, I'm going to click, hopefully the hand dipped incense has, doesn't have any review yet. This does look like a brand new product actually. Um, But I can... Go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, it's been, it's been there for a while, but um, but uh, the the mini candles at the or the candles have a review. Okay, so let's go right because this is all powered by Shopify, so this is kind of like automatic, right? Mhm. So here is the other thing, which is interesting. I like that we're doing this because, like, how do I find the candles? Oh, here. See, so that's interesting. I'm already confused and I'm on your shop page. Um, Hand poured candles, personalized candles. Great, great, great. Okay. So far in all the pages that I've been on, there hasn't been a review, which to me, I would say go into the back end of Shopify and disable the ability for people to see reviews because until you get enough where it actually looks important and legitimate, then it just looks like no one's bought this product. Okay. So I have a question. Is it possible, like, can you go to, cause you're on the, um, the hand poured ca- candles. Yeah. yeah. Um, can we go to candles and then see the reviews there and to see if it's right? Yes. And so how do I just find just candles? Um, oh, <laughs> the left that? navigation. Right. See, and so, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's. Okay, we're on candles. <laughs> Here we go. So you want me to click, not the personalized ones, yeah. but hand poured $35. Uh-huh. Ca- okay, got it. Yeah. So now on that page. Perfect. And there we go. So, right. That's when you want the reviews to auto populate because you do actually have reviews. I don't know if you can pick and choose what pages get reviews and what don't, but if you can't, then what I want you to do is get people to review. And so if you need to email everyone who has purchased a product from you in the last year, and I know you have that data because Shopify keeps it all. Mm -hmm. If you can email your past customers and say, you know, hi, it's me again, you know, as a small business owner right now, I know times are tough. I'm not, you know, you don't need to buy products. Phrase it how you want, but basically it's like, the best thing that you could do for me and my business as a small business owner is to leave a review because that will help me and help my website and help me get more sales. I think once people hear that that helps, you know, the average person is not going to know that that helps. If they can hear how and why that helps, like, oh, right. Then they think about it and they go, oh yeah, that's true. That is true. When I see good reviews on websites, I tend to buy. So then they take the time to do that. You can ask them to take the time to do that just out of the goodness of their heart. 
or you can do something like this. And again, it's a little bit of a cost for you, but it's really important that you have those reviews. You can say, you know, I'd love for you to review this product. You can probably even send emails to people who bought specific products even because of Shopify is my guess. So maybe Mm -hmm. all the people who bought the kit, all the people who bought in, you know, break it down and Hey, remember you bought this candles, blah, blah, blah. Um, you could say, I will send you, you know, if you leave me a review, please take a screen grab of it and email me at this address and include your mailing address. And I will email you a travel candle, right? Or I will email you some of my brand new incense, whatever it is. And it's, it's going to be a small cost for you and maybe only 10 people do it in total, but those 10 people are going to really help bump your reviews up. Okay. And would you say that it's okay to, let's say, obviously like right times right now is kind of difficult. Is, do you think it's just as effective if we were to send electronic gift card for the amount of like a, a mini candle? Yes. And that's okay. a great idea. So yeah, you, you, I never even thought about that. And it's less time on your part. So that's actually amazing because then you can say like, honestly, like $10, you know, I don't know how much you charge for those candles, but to me, it's well worth $10 because again, not ever, most people aren't going to do it, but to be able to say in the subject line, like, you know, $10 for your time, dot, 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 $10 to hear your opinion, dot, dot, dot. And really it's not like once they open the email, it's not really like, I want to hear your opinion. It's, it would really help me as a small business owner to get reviews. Cause the more reviews there are, the more confident people are to shop with me. And I hope that you're enjoying your product. Take a screen grab, email me. Here's your $10 gift card. Love it. So I want you to work on that, which would be great. Yes. And I've got a couple of observations. Okay. You do have too many categories. So currently the way that you present items are you have them in like bath. Let's see if we look at your navigation, bath, body, face, candles, home essentials, and the experience box, and then gift cards. I think that when people go to the shop page, you don't have enough products within each category to almost even warrant these different categories. Okay. There is another great entrepreneur that we talked with on this season, Samara Bags. And they have, you know, a number of styles of handbags, tote bags, little change purses, a jewelry box, you know. So they have, I would say, about 10 different styles of products. And then within those styles, you know, they have the different colorways. Mm-hmm. For you, it's like the different scents. Okay. So it might be best for you to even get rid of categories. Okay. And so the shop page is taking people to one shop page. And when they're on the mm-hmm. shop page, they then see soap, bath tea, body wash, candles, personalized candles, right? They see every single product listed Mm -hmm. out in a scrolling page. And what I like about this for you, because you have so few SKUs, uh, you know, people would say in the retail world, how many SKUs do you have? Like you don't have that many products. And then within that, you don't have so many, like you're not, we're not talking about like 15 cent options, right? No. So for me, it all fits on a page that yes, scrolls, but it's not you're constantly scrolling like down, 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 down. Okay. And I like this because if someone comes to the site and they want to buy candle, they're interested in candles, they see that you have candles, but they also notice that you have bags of bath tea. They might have never known that if they had gone to the candle page. So one page for shop, it's going to feature all of your products on it and it's going to appear nice and minimal and every product that you have, soap, candles, bath tea, whoops, I got to turn my thing off. (laughs) Every product that you have is given the same amount of real estate. 
the same size box or rectangle or however it is that you want to do it. So everything is democratically, you know, it's not, it's, it's pleasing to the eye that way. Okay. Right. And then they click to the soaps and they still get what you have, right? Okay. They still get to a page that shows everything. But I'm going to go even deeper with you here because there was some confusion. I, we were looking at your website and I was like, great, let's look at the soaps. Here's where it's a little confusing. Okay. You have the loofah soap and then you have the Sunday morning soap. Mm-hmm. Right? And maybe it's not as confusing but when you're on the phone, it is. And so I was looking at this page on my phone. Oh, can I look at my, I want to, I, yes. okay, so we can. Yeah, because here, here's the thing. You get to bar soaps and then what you see is scents, good vibes and Sunday morning. And you're like, okay, but what is the scent for Sunday morning? And what is the scent for good vibes? And it's because the information is lower Okay. So to me, each soap here needs its own page. So I'm creating a lot of extra work for you. I know this. No, it's really helpful because even as you are like going through this very like in a detailed way, it's super helpful because visually like I can envision seeing that and I'm, it's actually feeling more calm for me. Um, so I know, like, I'm fine with putting in the work, like, it's no problem. Yeah. Best guest ever. <laughs> <laughs> so great. So then from now on, when people, you know, they're going to go to that shop page, they're going to see that you have soap. Then they're going to click that page, you know, and what they're going to see on the soap page is two different variations. They're going to see that you have loofah soap and they're going to see that you have good morning soap, which looks like cut soap, right? Yes. Like is it, and cause that's two totally different styles of soap. Yes. Yeah. So those deserve, you know, each one is its own page. And another really great reason for this is because I'm envisioning that you grow <laughs> And as you grow, you're going to add more offerings. So for instance, under soap, you've got this loofah style soap, and then you have cut soap, cut hand soap. When people click the loofah soap, they're then going to get to this loofah soap page where they are going to be able to see that you have... Um, a variety of scents potentially in the future. You may not have them now, but you need to think when you're building your website, you need to think about the future and how easy it will be for you to add new products and new SKUs, new colorways if you're a fashion designer or if you're someone like you who does apothecary, new scents. Mm -hmm. So there you go. You've got your loofah soap, you've got your cut hand soap, and then... Here's another hot tip, and I'm, I know Shopify has this functionality, so what you're going to do is you don't have the widget on there now because you have reviews, but what you can start adding is the functionality to like show, uh, so there's a number of ways to do this. It's show like what other people were interested in. You know, in the very, very bottom, it'll show, it'll basically show other products or mm -hmm. what other people... Other people who purchased this product looked at this. I know you've seen this on other websites. Yeah, I've definitely seen it on, seen it on uh, Amazon. Mm -hmm. they ha I mean, lo this is a strategy that works because if you're looking at soap, it, you're probably then potentially like looking for other stuff in that same category, right? If you like lavender scented products you potentially show them other lavender scented products. Like here's the candle that we make. Here's the bath stuff. So it's basically recommended products, but it helps, it helps navigate people. So like I may not have been, I may have just wanted to buy soap, but I'm on the soap page. I'm clicking to order it. Oh my gosh. I also see that she does this exact same thing in a long you know, 80 hour burning candle. And then suddenly people are purchasing more products per transaction with you. 
Okay. And 100% Shopify has something that does this for sure. I've seen it on other Shopify websites. So I want you to get into the habit of thinking like a marketer. So you're not just CEO, founder, designer. You're not... You're already all those things, web designer, but also you're going to put on the marketing hat and you're looking at your website and thinking, how can I get people to buy more stuff? Well, it's easy because if you go to sites like Amazon and Zappos and the really big websites, you can see how they've done it and then just copy. Okay. (laughs) This is good. (laughs) I'm so glad that I've helped you so much so far. And then I'm bringing this up because we did a Mother's Day pop-up and you were part of the Mother's Day pop-up. And I remember going to your Instagram account to share it with someone and I shared it with them. And you had on your Instagram photos for something that wasn't the experience box but it, I could not find it on your website to save my life. And I can't remember what that might have been. Do you remember, were you offering anything that was like special or unique or interesting? Yeah, it was, um, we had a Mother's Day button initially and there were some curated boxes and it was like the experience box, but it came with flowers. There were a few like offerings, like group bundles for mm-hmm. Mother's Day. Right, so what's interesting about that is I could see that you were offering it on your social media, but then when I went to your website, I just couldn't find it. And then after a little while, I was just like, okay, I, it's too confusing. I'll DM her and ask her about it. And I obviously never DM'd you and asked you about it. And so you can see how easy that happens with potential customers. They're like, I'll put it on my to-do list. Maybe she sold out, but I'll, I'll get in touch with her. And then like a bunch of things happen and you forget. Right? Right, right. So I just want to make sure that um, when you're thinking about the way that social media relates to your website, you have to make sure that if you're about to promote something, you then do have to redesign your homepage. And you're only redesigning it for a week or two. Maybe it's just that you add one of those slide throughs, one of the slides is specifically about that thing, but you have to make it super easy okay, for people to find anything that you're talking about on social media. So just a thing, I, I feel like sometimes people do forget on um, social media all the time on Instagram, people will be like, uh, look, oh my God, I was mentioned in Inc. Magazine. I'm so proud of da, da, da. And then it's like, there's no way for me, you know, Instagram doesn't have links within descriptions. Right. So then you think, okay, I'll go up to the top and there will be a link in the bio to the ink article. And there's mm-hmm. never a link. And I'm just like, oh, they just, it's too bad because they talked about it, but they lost the opportunity of all those people seeing that post and then being able to get to that article. Mm-hmm. So we only have a couple minutes left. So what I want to do is talk about photography, which I promised we would be talking about at the beginning of the episode. (laughs) Don't think I forgot. (laughs) No worries. I didn't think so. (laughs) So here's what I have to say about your photography. You have lifestyle. This is what I call lifestyle photography, where it's shots of products with backgrounds and in scenes, you know, like it's a landscape shot and then there's a product in it. That's great. Everyone needs lifestyle photography of their products. And you're definitely going to have to do a few photo shoots in the future. And it's going to take time to style them. It's going to take time to then edit those photos, like all of those things. But I guarantee you that when you finish and you upload new photography to your website, it is going to make a huge difference. And this is why. Right here on your homepage, you've got these photos and they, not in this format, are great photos. But what happens in the format of web is it's like all the way from the left side of the screen, all the way to the right. And so this photo, for instance, of these two candles becomes stretched a little. It's not as in focus as I would want it to be. It's a little pixelated. And it's just because the website is so massive from side to side, the amount of pixels that it takes. That exact same photo 
on Instagram is going to be shrunk down and it's going to look fine. But on here, it's just a little fuzzy. And okay. so if this is the template for the homepage that you're going to stick with, what you have to do is take photography that is landscape, aka horizontal, not vertical. So when you're shooting products, everyone listening needs to do this. You have to shoot the exact same photos and setups in both landscape and vertical. So snap the photos, then turn your camera the other way and snap the exact same photos because they look different. And on, la on social media and Instagram, what tends to be popular is you need vertical photos, especially if you're going to put them into stories or IGTV. But online, on a website, for beauty images, you need them to be really wide. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason for that. So you tend to take lifestyle photography of your products. So I want you to do a whole other photo shoot and get even more lifestyle shots because you don't have enough. Mm -hmm. And I say this, you have enough for your website, but you don't have enough to have variety on your social media. And mm -hmm. so you need to think, I don't just need a photo that I can maybe use on my website, a few photos for the product page specifically. That's only like five photos, right? You're like, okay, yes. I've done it. On to the next shot. You need those five photos for your website, but what you need is another 10 of every single product to give you enough content for months at a time for your social media. You can't really use the same photos over and over on the website and on social media. It's just, it's expired content. So close-ups of a candle, a candle from the bird's eye view top down, um, a candle of someone smelling it, a candle on, against marble, a candle, you know, every single type of shot that you can think of, you're getting social media content. So really when you shoot one product, your goal is to get like at least, I think, 20 amazing photos, if not 25. Okay. And it's a lot. It, that seems intimidating, but you can do it. Yes. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the only other comment I have about your photography is, and I'm glad that I'm still sharing the screen because I'm going to go into a specific product page. So what's a great brand that you love? What's a website or brand that you love? Anthropology. Anthropology. So I guarantee you that when we visit Anthropology, and I'm going to do it right now because everyone can see, this is what customers are used to, and this is what they like, and knowing that you need to emulate it because anything less is doing a disservice to your brand. Okay. So they don't use lifestyle shots which is a really big differentiator between small businesses and big businesses, right? Small businesses are just trying to get the photography done because they've got 8,000 other things to do, including <laughs> responding to DMs, packing orders, taping orders. You know, it's a, whole, it's a whole thing. But when you look at these sandals, you see multiple angles of the same product photographed against white. And... This may not seem important to you, but it is because <laughs> it helps the product pop and it's timeless and there's nothing that attaches it to anything. And what I mean by that is when you shoot a product in a very specific environment, instantly you are gonna connect with some people. So if you shoot your bath tees, in um, a, a bathroom that looks a certain way or, or a counter that, ha that looks a certain way, there's green product, you're going to appeal to a lot of people. But there are some people who don't have that decor or style of aesthetic, and they're going to be like, this doesn't really attract me. It's much smarter for you to shoot those products. Let's say the bath tea. So now I'm going to go back to your page, the bath tea. Okay. I do love this photo shoot, by the way. It's fantastic for social media and for the homepage. But scrolling here, it's too lifestyle-y, right? What you really should see is the, pa the package and just shot against white. Then you should see, I think, like 
a close-up of the package with the tea loose around the bottom of the package. Okay. Not that, and this is what's funny, right? Not that the, it's not a bunch of loose tea in the package, but it's just a visual. Okay. Right? Then I really want to see the individual tea bag. And so you shoot this adorable organza individual tea bag again against white, and it's a close up of it. And currently, your packaging has on the back side of it all the tea bags. And so you shoot that same thing against white. And what that does is it leaves no room for disappointment on the customer's side. Okay. They see the package. They're like, ooh, very cute packaging. Love it. Oh, I can see that there's a bunch of tea bags in each one. Now, of course, if they read the full description, they'd know that there were X number of tea bags. But we all know people don't like to read because they mm-hmm. just don't. <laughs> and then they would see a beautiful shot against plain white of the actual tea bag. Oh, now I get it. There's this beautiful satchel and I'm just going to put that in my bath while it's running. Like it helps them see everything. Mm -hmm. So I want you to go back and be inspired by your favorite store anthropology. (laughs) Right. I'm going to click to beauty and wellness and let's go to um, bath and body. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So here we go. This is a bath soak. They only have two shots. However, right up close, I can see, okay, great. It comes in a cute glass jar. And like I said, how the loose product, it just helps customers visualize. Okay. So you have the the satchel or the package and then around it, the loose stuff. It's just a funny thing. Human beings like to see what they're getting. What I like is that then you also, they did this so that people could see that there were different scents and different options. But, you know, choose to do what you want. But I think that what you should do is spend some time on their website to get inspired and see how they're shooting all of their product. Okay. And what's interesting is if you went to the anthropology um, social media channels and you typed in anthropology on Pinterest, it wouldn't be these photos that would come up most likely. It would be like model shots of people in like the South of Italy wearing their clothing. Like those are what I consider to be lifestyle shots. And those can be on your homepage. They can be put on the about page. They can, they, you can scatter them around the website, but really when it comes to product shots, we need this type of thing because that's what the average person is used to. Okay. And once you do all of that stuff, (laughs) you're golden. I love it. I cannot wait. This is great. Yay. Well, I'm so glad that you were not intimidated. You are ready for this information and that you, I know that you're just going to get to it. Yeah, no, this is great. This has been like, I'm so blessed. So thank you so much. Of course. Well, I have loved talking with you. I'm so excited to see the progress. Like, I know. I can't wait to send it to you. I'm going to like, look what I did. Yeah, no, it's work time. So I'm excited. Good. Well, all my best to you and your mom. I'm excited for you to just keep growing, growing, growing. And yes. I truly believe that, uh, you know, in times of crisis, really amazing opportunity is possible. Yeah. So, It's true. It's true. It definitely has uh, shown me that for sure. Like, it's okay, Crystal. Like, you know how to, you're an entrepreneur first and foremost, so you can make this happen. So, yes. Yep. And I know you will. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Sonia, for having me. Of course. Thank you for being on. (laughs) All right. See you later. Okay. Bye. Hey, wait, before you go, calling all small business owners, nonprofit pioneers, and savvy side hustlers. If you're looking for the smarter way to market your idea, small business, or cause online, Constant Contact has your back. Whether you're just getting started and need a simple logo maker, or easy way to build your website or online store, or if you're ready to step up your online marketing game with customizable email campaigns, social media, and search marketing tools, Constant Contact has everything you need to achieve online marketing success, 
all in one place. Paired with practical advice from their award-winning team of marketing experts at every step of the way, Constant Contact helps you achieve real results fast. For an exclusive deal, visit constantcontact.com unique to get started today.